Hi everybody, Mr. Lee here, and in this video, I'm going to go into vertical motion, the kinematics of objects that is launched uh, straight up. Uh, there's a lot of cool physics that it goes behind objects that go up and then fall back down. And in this video, we're going to uncover all of those tiny little secrets. Okay. So to start us off, uh, I have a scenario here. I just have a ball that is launched vertically from the ground at 15 meters per second. So to start us off, I'm going to do a quick little sketch uh, of the scenario. I have a ball. That's, a, that's pretty good. A red ball there. Um, and I'm going to draw the floor. That's a nice floor. And the ball goes, pew! It reaches the peak, and then it falls back down. Boo! All right. Now, uh, to differentiate the two uh, motions of this, this scenario, the rise and the fall, I'm going to be writing in the first part, the rise part A uh, in blue, and I'll do the fall in purple, but we'll get to that when we, when we do. All right. The first thing I want to do is I want to create our table. We have initial position. We have final position, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration and time so the initial velocity or excuse me the initial position because we're starting from the floor will be zero meters the final position we don't know what that is we don't know how high up it goes so I'm gonna put a question mark there uh, the initial velocity according to this scenario will be 15 meters per second the final velocity now the problem doesn't tell us this but we do know what it is when this object reaches the peak Okay, the peak, the object has a velocity of zero meters per second. That is one of those cool little tidbits. Uh, when you jump in the air, okay, the vertical velocity, the y velocity, okay, will be zero at the very peak. So when you jump, you're actually floating for a brief second. Um, now, if things are launched at an angle like this, okay, at the peak, uh, there is no y velocity, but there's an x velocity because it still has to move horizontally, but it won't go up anymore, right? And we have the acceleration. Uh, the acceleration, remember, it either speeds up objects or it slows down objects. That's the definition of uh, acceleration. And the acceleration here will be negative 9.8 meters per second squared, because that's the acceleration due to gravity, and we don't know how long this entire trip took. All right, uh, let's do the math for the rise, okay? Usually, you always want to figure out the time it takes for these things, okay? And because time's not given here, that's going to be the very first thing I'm going to figure out. So I'm going to go over to my equations. Uh, same technique. I'm going to ask myself, do I have this variable? If so, put a check mark. If no, put a little x. Okay, so do I have the final velocity? Uh, I do. Do I have the initial velocity? I do. Do I have the acceleration? I do. Do I have the time? Not numerically, but that is something that I need to find out. So I'm going to put a little check mark there. Okay. So let's find out the velocity. So we have VF is equal to VO plus A times T. Okay. Well, we start off with the, uh, with the equation. Now I'm going to put in the zeros where they belong. So final velocity is zero. Um, and I think that's the only zero that we have. Next, I'm going to rearrange the equation so that uh, the variable that we are looking for is by itself. We're going to isolate that variable. So the variable that we're looking for is time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract both sides uh, from VO. So I get minus VO minus VO. And I'm going to cross out what gets canceled. Wow, that's big. Reduce that size, all right? So we get negative VO is equal to uh, acceleration times time. And because we're looking for time and it's being multiplied by the acceleration, I'm gonna divide both sides by the acceleration, cross out what gets canceled out, and I am now left with time is equal to negative V initial divided by the acceleration, okay? Now, what I wanna do, now I want to put in the numbers. Okay, so we know that the initial velocity was 15, and the acceleration oops, is negative 9.8. Okay, next, 
uh, I'm going to bring out my calculator and figure out that math. So we have uh, 15, negative 15, excuse me, divided by uh, negative 9.8, and that gives us 1.53 seconds. That is the time it takes to rise up to the peak. Okay, uh, I'm going to plug that in right there, 1.53 seconds. Now I want to know how high up did this object go? So uh, how high up is with the position variable? So I'm going to go down here. Uh, do I have final position? No, but that is what I'm looking for to so check. Do I have initial position? Yes, I do. Zero. Do I have initial velocity? Yes, I do. Do I have the time? Yes, I have figured that out. Do I have acceleration? Uh, yes, I do. Do I have time? Yes, I do. All right. Looks like I found the equation that I needed. So I'm going to start off with the equation itself. Once again, this is just very good habit that you should get into. Uh, it does make the physics a lot easier. Next, I'm going to put in the zeros where they belong. Um, so we know that the initial position is zero. We start from the floor. The initial velocity is not zero. Plus one half uh, a t squared. So we're given something like this. Okay. Um, all right. Now with this, we can figure out the, the final height. Okay. Normally I would rearrange this equation uh, so that we are in a equation state where the missing variable is what we're looking for. But luckily for us, the missing variable is right there. So plug in my values. My initial velocity is 15. My initial time is 1.53 plus 1 half, that is negative 9.8, uh, time is 1.53 squared. Okay, now there's a lot of numbers here. There's going to be a lot of calculations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this uh, bits and pieces at a time. All right, I'm going to do 15 times 1.53, okay, 22.95, and now I'm going to write that down. So I see a lot of students try to do this all at once, and I don't, I don't recommend it, um, mainly because things can get messy and you might mess up on your keystrokes for your, your calculator. Okay? So just tiny little pieces at a time, it does make a big difference. 1.53 squared, so 1.53 times 1.53, times negative 9.8, times uh, one half and we get negative 11.47 okay once again I'm not adding the 22.95 yet I'm just adding it all up uh, so what I get is a total of 22.95 uh, 11.48 meters is my final height so I'm going to write that in right now, 11.48 meters. Okay, so I'm going to highlight that. We found that, and we found that. Okay, now let's do the fall portion. B, the fall. Okay, uh, once again, I'm going to start off by creating my table. My table. So I have XO, XF, VO, VF, A, and T. Uh, my initial position, uh, remember we're starting from the fall, so we're starting from the highest point, and we just found that. That was 11.48 meters. Uh, when it falls, it falls to the ground, so that's zero meters. Our initial velocity, um, because we're at the peak, the peak vertical velocity is zero meters per second. Uh, the final velocity, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a little pause right here. Uh, this is very important. A lot of students think that when objects fall and when the object hits the ground, okay, when it hits the ground, automatically the velocity is zero. And that's not, that's not the case. So let's imagine this. Instead of the object hitting the floor, like a solid floor, let's imagine that the object hits a floor made out of paper. Okay, so you throw an object up, the object goes up, it falls down, and it hits that paper-thin surface is the, what's gonna happen? 
the object is going to go straight through that paper thin surface. And when it goes straight through the paper thin surface, we know that it's still moving. So whenever our object goes up and it falls and it hits the ground, the velocity itself is not zero meters per second as soon as it hits the floor. It's still moving when it hits the floor. Okay. The only time that the velocity after it hits the floor will be zero meters per second is after a very long period of time, okay, where the object hits the floor and it stays on the floor. Otherwise, it is still considered to be moving. Anyways, we don't know what the final velocity is. Alright, and now we have the acceleration. Um, the, the thing that's accelerating this object will be the acceleration due to gravity. So we have negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, and we don't know, we don't know how long it'll take to fall. Okay, we just don't know that. We don't know that yet. You might know it. I know it, but we didn't figure it out yet. All right, next, uh, let's bring over this equation if we can. Cool. Brought over this equation. Let's figure out a couple of the unknown variables. Wow. So once again, uh, time is very important here. So I'm not, I want to find out the time. Okay, go to my first equation. Do I have final velocity? Uh, nope, don't have the final velocity. Okay. Do I have initial velocity? I do have the initial velocity. Do I have the acceleration? I do. Do I have the time? Uh, I don't have the time, but we're looking for it. All right. Whoa, x. Okay, so we can't use this equation. Alrighty. Do I have final position? Yes, I do. Do I have initial position? Yes, I do. Uh, do I have initial velocity? Yes, I do. Do I have the time? I do not have the time, Okay, but I'm looking for it. Do I have the acceleration? I do have the acceleration. Do I have the time? I don't have the time, but looking for it. Oh, would you look at that? Check marks all around. I am going to use that equation. All right, xf is equal to xo plus v initial times time plus one half acceleration times time squared. Uh, I am now going to put in the zeros where they belong according to my chart uh, plus zero times time plus one half a t squared. Okay, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. Uh, zero times time, that just gives us zero. So I'm gonna cross that out. It's a reminder. All right, we're looking for time here. So I want to isolate this time variable so that it's by itself. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract both sides by the initial position. Okay, so we get uh, these to cancel out. That leaves us with negative xo is equal to one half a t squared. Ooh, we have a one half here. How can I get rid of that one half, that two in the denominator? Very good. I'm gonna multiply by two on both sides. Okay, so that cancels out the two in the denominator because we have a two here in the numerator. And then we get negative two xo is equal to a t squared, almost there. We have a acceleration that's being multiplied. Gonna get rid of it by dividing both sides by the acceleration, cancel that out. All right, so we have negative two x initial divided by the acceleration is equal to t squared, almost there. Final step is to square root it. All right, and when you square root it, this squared, it gets canceled out, and we are left with t is equal to the square root of negative 2 x initial all divided by the acceleration. Okay, Whew. now, now we can plug in our numbers. So I'm just going to do that to the side. We have negative 2 times the initial position, which was, what was it, 11.48 divided by the acceleration, negative 9.8. Uh, you know what, I could do this in my head, but you can't see inside my brain, so I'm going to use a calculator. Ha ha ha! Alright, so 11.48 times negative 2 divided by negative 9.8 gives us 2.342, so on and so forth. Take the square root of that bad boy, and we get 1.53. Seconds! Wow! Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's pump some brakes here. All right, 1.53 seconds. Very important. Oh, hmm, doesn't that look familiar? 
or I hope it does, because the time it takes to rise is the same time it takes to fall. Whoa! Now that, now that is cool. That is nifty. There's a lot of symmetry that's going on here. All right, so I'm gonna put that in 1.53 seconds. Okay. Now we have one, one last one. With what velocity does this ball hit the ground? Now you might be thinking to yourself, Mr. Lee, Mr. Lee. You know, I, I think I got this. There's a lot of numbers here that look very similar to each other. Wouldn't it just be 15 meters per second? Because that's the only thing that's not repeating. Well, to that I say, let's solve for it, okay? So we want to find out the final velocity. We want to figure out the final velocity. So we want final velocity. I'm gonna put a little check mark there. We have initial velocity, yes we do. Do we have the acceleration? Yes we do. Do we have the time? Well, we do now. Looks like we found our equation. Vf is equal to Vo plus A times time. I'll put in the zeros where they belong. All right, uh, clean that up a little bit. Okay, rearrange it so that it's in the form where we are looking for the variable. Lucky for us, we are looking for Vf, so we don't have to do any rearranging there. And now all we have to do is just plug in our values. So we have negative 9.8 times the time, which was 1.53. Uh, and I do Okay, that's my brain calculator working. It gives us negative 15 meters per second. What? Your predictions came true. The velocity that this ball is launched with, 15 meters per second, is the same velocity that the object falls and hits the ground with 15 meters per second. And you might be thinking to yourself, Mr. Lee, those two numbers, they are not the same. And to which I say, well, yes, technically you are correct. The, the speeds are the same. The 15 is the same. This negative, remember, for velocity, that negative simply means that it's going downwards. Okay, it doesn't mean that it's small, but it's just going downwards. So it hits the ground with the same velocity that is launched with. Oh man, that is super cool. Anyways, that was uh, this was Mr. Lee with the vertical motion kinematics. I hope you learned a thing or two. Uh, there's a lot of great golden nuggets of information here. Uh, I will see you next time.